go. Oh, all right, welcome to the McCurdy Lift, the Instagram live session. Uh, we had a great success a few days ago, and back with us is John Ranieri. Uh, John's an elite professional runner getting ready for uh, marathon distances, but over the course of this season, we're going to shift gears with all the adaptations we are facing, and we want to be able to provide you at home some of the workouts that we do on a regular basis. Um, you know, we recognize that many of you are still stuck at home or the gyms are closed, and we want to make sure that you have what it is you need to be successful in your fitness journey. Maybe you won't be able to run outside because it's too dark or it's too icy, depending on where you are. Uh, you can use these workouts as a great substitute uh, for some of the running that, that you wish to do, or honestly, just some, uh, some, uh, some mental relief, some, some uh, stress relief. Uh, so we're gonna get right into it. John, go ahead and get down into a plank. Uh, I'm gonna provide a few alternate exercises uh, to get moving with. So John, you're in your plank position. We're gonna go right into toe taps. Move your one leg out to the side, and then the other leg out to the side. Alternating these legs. But what you wanna make sure you don't do is let the hips twist. Um, and Hannah, you can feel free to come on in and zoom in as I'm talking loud. We are filming this on YouTube. Uh, we're just going to save this video for YouTube. Um, so if you're following this on YouTube, welcome. And make sure you click the link and share the link with your friends. Uh, a lot of people need some help right now. We want to be able to provide that guidance and that stability for you. So we're going to aim for 12 per side. John's going to keep track on his own, and I'm going to talk a bit. All right, so one of the things we want to make sure is the hips don't twist and the back stays flat. John, where are we at? We're at 11. All right, awesome. Then this, this exercise lasts for about 45 to 60 seconds. Lay down in the back, palms facing the ceiling. If you can, bend your feet. You can use a soup can, right? We're going to go right into the single leg bridge with a soup can. Otherwise, that foot, this leg is in the air. Otherwise, that foot is going to stay flat on the ground. Smooth and slow. I'm going to change this up just a little bit to get a little bit more light in there. All right. Much better. Much better. Again, we're going to go for 12 up to 15 reps. We want to use a soup can to challenge stability, but if you're not ready for that soup can yet, keep that foot flat on the ground. Smooth and slow, no major pausing. Heather Peck, Coach Heather Peck, you would love that comment. No major pausing. We want to wake up that, that posterior chain. We want to stretch the chest. We're going to go ahead and switch sides. Smooth and slow. And guys, as this workout goes on, we will progress some of these exercises. We're going to provide you with alternate movements as well. One of the alternate movements on this is no soup can, just a single leg bridge. Uh, but we do want to challenge stability. We want to give you the best workout we can in a safe environment. All right, that's a little better. There we go. You can see my face. All right, John, where are we at? 12. All right, kneeling down. We're going to grab an eight-pound weight. We're going to do a reverse fly. Both feet on the ground. The weight doesn't touch the ground. No, no. All, on, on all fours. Okay. Kneeling, reverse fly. There we go. Smooth and slow. And smooth and controlled. No pause. No pause. Not just yet. A little slower. We want this exercise again to last about 45 to 60 seconds. But if you go too fast, you're not going to get the same benefit out of the exercise. So we want no pausing, a smooth, slow, controlled motion to start. There is a time and place to add some pausing. But for right now, for the purpose of today's session, no pausing. We don't want to let the weight go behind us. So try to keep that weight perpendicular to the body. And John, once you're ready to switch, turn around for me and switch sides so we get a better view of the exercise. Good, go slower. Control that weight. Don't let that shoulder rise up. Good, good, good position. Again, 12 to 15 reps should last 45 to 60 seconds. We want to open up with these core exercises to wake up the body. It's not too invasive on you. Uh, and for some of you, it might be a little bit too simple. That's okay. All we're looking for is a little bit of movement, a little bit of motion, and we'll get into some 
more serious and more uh, extensive exercises as we continue with the workout. Good. So on your back crunch position, feet in the air, knees bent. So we're going to go right into it. Fingertips at the ears, elbows wide. You're going to push those knees in front of you just a little bit. Right? Go ahead. Smooth and slow. Try to get those shoulders off the ground as much as you can without being in pain in that lower back. Now, if you notice here, those knees are just past the hip line. Right? That's making the lever a little bit longer. That's one of the things that's really important uh, for those who are trying to progress the exercise. If this causes pain in the lower back, simply put the feet on the ground. We don't want to cause any lower back pain, especially if you're stuck at home. That's going to be no fun if you're lying around all day in bed. Right? The idea is to move, not get hurt. All right? We just want a little bit of extension. Good. Let's move this on. Let's go back to that plank position. We're going to go right into that next series without rest. Plank position. Good. Now, John, get yourself into a push-up position without letting your hips twist. One hand at a time. Good. Good. Now, go back down to your plank. This is called a plank up-down. You're going to keep going through 12 to 15 repetitions. If this is too intense. You're just going to continue with the plank with toe tap, right? But this is a simple progression of the plank. Maybe you weren't ready for the push-up just yet. Maybe you can only handle six to eight of these repetitions. Then you go back down to the plank toe tap, and if that becomes too challenging, just hold that plank. But again, we're looking for this exercise to last about 45 to 60 seconds. John, where are we at? About 45 to 60 seconds. All right, keep going. No, 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 you're not done yet. Give me three more reps. I need you to keep counting these, my friend. Good. Pay attention to those hips. Don't let them twist. Two more. Good. Now, if you find yourself twisting a lot, you can widen those feet just a little bit to give you uh, a little bit more of a stable base on your back. Good. We're going to do this single leg bridge again. We're going to grab this soup can. We all have these at home, but if you don't by chance and you have a foam roller, you can grab that, or you can grab a dumbbell. But for John, right now, we're going to do this single leg bridge, feet in the air, palms facing the center. We're going to change this up just a little bit. So hold this position. You're going to roll your foot just an inch, and then pull back, and then come back down again. Up, holding, push, pull, come back down. I want 10 reps. When you come down, come down slowly. Let your spine roll to the ground. Good. Much better position. All right. So this, again, is a progressed version of the exercise. When he's up, he's going to hold that position. He's going to roll that foot out, pull it back, and then come back down slowly. All right. Push, pull, and then come back down. Again, if this is too progressed, just do the single leg bridge with the soup can. If that is too progressed, Simply just do the single leg bridge, but maybe you can add a two or a three second pause on top. Where are we at, John? Eight. All right, we got two more reps. Good. Palms are facing that ceiling. We're stretching the chest every single time those hips come up. Good. Now let's switch legs. Same concept. It is okay. It's 100% okay for one leg to be stronger or more stable than the other. Good. We don't want to roll too far. It's a very subtle motion. About an inch, inch and a half, and then pull it back in, and then back down slowly with the spine. Good. It's a little bit more of a challenge in that bridge position. You're really using the glutes and waking up the hamstrings in a completely different environment. And with most of us stuck at home, uh, not able to use a gym, we're, we're finding ourselves sitting down so much more. Uh, so this is a great way to work the back of the body and wake those muscles up. So when you are able to get back outside again, or if you are running a little bit more outside, you are stronger through here. Where are we at, Dan? Nine. Good. One more. And ten. Kneeling down, reverse fly. Here's your dumbbell. This time the extension of the opposite leg. Opposite leg is straight back behind you, and you're going to hold it there, smooth and slow, 12 to 15 repetitions. Again, there's a lot of posterior chain waking up in these series of exercises, the, the first series of the core motion, because 
We don't want to neglect this. We want to weigh it up as much of the back as we can. If you can push up a little bit more here, push out. There we go. Good. And by adding this extension, we're waking up the glutes. In running, our glutes are really, really important. We don't want to have our butt fall asleep. Go ahead and switch sides. Push that leg out straight back. Perfect. Good. Good upper back position. Smooth and slow. And don't hit me. So we want to keep that weight perpendicular. Good. Try to keep that shoulder away from the ears. Fantastic. Good. Again, this video is going to stay online on Instagram live for 24 hours. All right, so if you're just popping in right now, have no fear. It's going to stay online for 24 hours. But if you miss it or if you don't get a chance, we're recording right now. And if I don't mess this up, we'll be able to save this video and share it on YouTube, on the Mercury Train YouTube channel. All right. We're going to go back into that plank position. Now again, this plank position is uh, progressive. If this is too much, you can stay with the toe taps. If, it's, if the up downs are too much, stay with the toe taps. If this next level is too much, then stay with the up downs. So John, what I'm gonna have you do without, without twisting is reach one, out in front, one hand out in front of you, good, and then pull it back, and then switch. Good, perfect. So one of the things that we're trying to do here is alternate the arms, but we're trying to keep our body stable. We don't want, when one arm goes up, we don't want to twist the hips, all right? It's a very simple exercise, but when you take four points and move it to three, you're challenging your core in a much different way. John, how hard is this right now for you? Crazy hard. <laughs> so again, if this is a pretty significant challenge. If this is too much for you, just go back to that plank with toe tap, and if that is too much, Go back to just holding a plank. We're going to still shoot for 45 to 60 seconds or 12 to 15 reps per side. If this is the first time you're doing this, 12 reps per side or even 6 reps per side is more than okay. All right. Once you get to 12, we're going to rotate. Get back into that single leg bridge position. This time, we're going to leave out the soup can. Go ahead and get in that single leg bridge position, or the, sorry, the double leg bridge position. Feet in, hips are in the air, toes are, are up in the air. Good. And you're going to walk out just a bit, toes in the air, and then you're going to walk back in. Good. And we're going to keep the hips up in the air the entire time. You're never going to come back down. Walk it out slowly, and then pull it back in. I'm going to move this chair out of the way to give you a little bit more space to come out a little bit farther. All right? So you want to keep those hips up in the air as long as you can, and then pull back in. Toes stay in the air. Good. We're not trying to rush, trying to go all the way out, right? We're not trying to rush pulling back in. We want to take some time. We're going to do this for eight repetitions. We want to do this for a little bit less because the hips are in the air, and we're activating our muscles for a longer extended period of time. So we don't need as many reps to cover the time that we are trying to work with. Good, a little bit higher with those hips, keep connection. Let's do one more repetition. Good, and on your knees with a reverse fly. Good, kneeling down. Good, so now we're gonna change position, or change tempo, opposite leg is extended back. Don't jump the first repetition, but go up quickly. Don't jump it, but go up quickly, a little quicker. Holding for two, and then down, two, three, four. Up quickly, holding, and then down slowly. The same weight in this tempo is going to take a little bit longer to move, about seven seconds per repetition. So what you might find is that same weight gets heavier and heavier and heavier. That's okay. If you can get six to eight repetitions with this, fantastic. If you can get all ten, that's a minute and ten seconds of a reverse fly, working a relatively small muscle, moving way over a period of time. That's great. That's fantastic. Maybe that means you can go up a little bit heavier next time around. Or maybe that means you need a little heavier weight when you're moving just two seconds up and two seconds down. Good. Good. Fantastic work, John. Not letting your hips twist. 
You're not rotating too much with that shoulder. Good. Try not to let that weight touch the ground. We don't want to reset every single time that weight moves. And notice that leg is extended straight back and up. Go ahead and switch sides. How many reps did you get in there? Ten. Ten. Fantastic. Great. All right. And the reason why John is turning around is so you guys at home have a great view of what he's doing. Clearly, you don't need to turn. Just switch hands. Good. Up quick, holding for two seconds, and then down slowly for four. Good. We want each rep to last about seven seconds. Good. Try not to let that shoulder rise too much. Once you lose technique, once you lose the ability to maintain form and you start to compensate and twist too much, that is your body giving you a signal that the weight or the progression has become too much. And either you stop the repetition or you reduce the weight. Where are we at? Eight. Good. Let's just do one more because you're starting to rise up with that shoulder. We don't want to force it. We don't want to risk injury for the sake of a repetition. On your back, feet in the air. All right, so we're going to progress this crunch position, feet up, knees bent. You're going to crunch up and down. Nope, just, just crunch. Oh, a little higher with the shoulder. Little. There we go. Now go down. Hold. Wait there. Wait there. Go down. Go down and wait. And then push, pull. Up and down with the shoulders. Then push, pull. Good. Go slow with the crunch. So we're going up and down with the shoulders, and then we're pushing and pulling. You're only going to push and pull your knees as far as your body will allow pain-free. The longer this lever gets, the more risk to the back, so we don't want to go too far. Be the judge on what makes the most sense for you. We want to keep this back, this lower back, connected and planted in the ground, even though the legs are becoming longer and longer. We're going to look for 10 total repetitions. 10 with a crunch, 10 with the legs. Where are we at, Dan? Six. All right, we got four more. Good. You don't need to hold on top. You can, but you don't need to. Try to have a controlled, smooth, mo smooth motion. Good. Make sure you're breathing. All right. One more. All right, good. All right. Take a little bit of a, a, little bit of a breather, guys. Grab some water. Take about 60 seconds to 90 seconds. Um, I hope that uh, you're able to, to find different tools in your home for this type of work. And not everybody has weights. So if you need a can, uh, right here we have a one pound, 12 ounce can of uh, green chili enchilada sauce. Right? So in that, you can certainly do the kneeling reverse fly with this can. You just want to make sure, because it's a lighter weight, that you are holding it or going slower than you normally would as if you were using an eight pound weight. It might make your workout last a little bit longer, but that's okay. We have, we have, we have these tools for a reason. We also have, if you, uh, if you can find it, a uh, um, 68 ounce uh, can uh, or a jar of, uh, of olive oil. This makes for a great device for doing substitution for your weight exercises. So now we're gonna get into uh, doing some total body movement, getting the legs more involved, and slightly more explosive. So John, I'm gonna have you get into a single leg split squat position. Your front foot is gonna be on the pad here, your back foot is gonna be on the pad behind you. The heel's gonna be in the air, your chest is gonna be up tall. Now if this is too much, if this position is too much for you, right? Go to a regular squat position. We're going to take that 4 two, one tempo into this position. So down slow, two, three, holding, not letting the knee touch the ground, and then up quick. Down slow, two, three, four, hold, two, up. Down, two, three, four, hold, two, that's three. Down, two, three, four, hold, two, that's four. Down. Two, three, four. Hold, two, that's five. Down, two, three, four. Hold, two, that's six. Down, two, three, four. 
hold, two, all, come on, don't feel that hold, two, three, four, Wait, hold, two, seven, down slow, hold, two, there's eight, down, two, three, four, hold, two, that's nine, down, two, three, four, hold, two, that's ten, switch legs. All right, hands at the hips is just fine. Down slow, three, four, hold, two, that's one. Down, two, three, four, hold, two, that's two. Down, so we're gonna do 10 per side, but if you are uh, in the base position, you're actually gonna do 20 repetitions of the squat, 15 to 20. And while John finishes up his 10 on each leg, and you're done with your squats because you got done with 15. Let's hold there. Wait until we get to the next exercise. Good. Where are we at now? Seven. Two, three, four. Hold. Two. That's eight. Down. Two, three, four. Hold. Two. That's nine. Down. Two, three, four. Hold. Two. That's ten. Side plank. Side plank. Facing sideways to the camera for us so we can have a good view of what's happening. One foot is over the top, like so, and you're going to be holding this position for 45 to 60 seconds. What you're going to want to do is twist those hips. So try to make sure those hips stay forward and you're squeezing those cheeks and you raise those hips up a little bit higher down. Look, there we go. Good. Good. Keep your hand on top, or you can reach high, challenging that stability even more. In five, four, three, two, one. Rotate switch sides, and let's get the other side. Good. Side plank. We don't want to just work up and down, forward and backward. We want to work different positions, different planes of motion of our body. Reach up tall. Good. Those hips are going to stay nice and high. Good. The hips are pushed forward because you're squeezing your cheeks and you're locking out those quads. Good. Good motion. It's okay to shake. Shaking is not a bad thing. If you haven't done this exercise in a while, totally fine. If you need to regress, you can always dip to your knee. That's another option in this movement. Uh, it just makes your lever a little bit shorter so you don't feel as heavy. In five, four, three, two, one. All right, now we're gonna grab a heavier dumbbell. Now, if you don't have a dumbbell, you can always grab a gallon of milk, a gallon of water. Certainly, you can grab a heavier olive jar or olive oil jar, right? So now you're going to get into a squat position, a holding squat position, with the weight down in front of you. Good. There we go. Now just turn sideways for us so the camera can see it sideways. And let's grab it with this arm so the camera can see it from here. So here, you're going to bend your shoulders down a little bit more. So we're fighting gravity, and you're going to pull up and down. Good. Can we get that chest lower to the ground, ass higher to the ceiling? Good. Smooth and slow. And it doesn't matter if that back arm is on the hip. It doesn't matter if that back arm is here on the knee. We just want that chest down to the ground so we're fighting gravity and keeping pressure off the lower part of the back. And it's okay if you feel a little stretching in your hamstrings. That's fine too. Go smooth and slow. Good. Switch sides, switch angles. Notice how John has a nice flat back. The chest is low. You can get a little bit lower, though. Then you can raise the cheeks a little bit higher. Good. Good. Where are we at? Well, good. Sit down on your butt. Feet. 
on the ground, heels on the ground, toes in the air, hands here. Pull your feet in underneath you a little bit more. Good. Toes are in the air. Lean back just slightly and pick your heels up off the ground. Hold that position. So this is a challenging position. John, I'm actually going to have you switch uh, angles so the camera can see a little bit better. All right. You're going to lean back. Your hands are together. Your heels are off the ground. And if you catch yourself or if you feel yourself falling, clearly catch yourself with the hands if you're starting to fall backwards because you're leaning back too far. Or put your, your, your heels down to give yourself a little bit of a rest because you're starting to get a little bit of a cramp in those hips. All right. So, John, you're holding yourself very, very well. So now let's add, point your fingers away from your body. Good. Now let's add a twist from one side to the other. But let's try to get the fingertips to touch the ground. Now, for some, this might put a little bit more stress on your back than you might want. Let's go for eight per side. So if this is too much for you or if the motion is too aggressive, you can just twist, not just with the hands, but with the shoulders just slightly, or you can just hold. And if it's too aggressive, you can hold for 10 seconds, rest, hold for 10 seconds, rest, right? And you can do that for three to five rounds. So we're getting, again, about 45 to 60 seconds for the exercise. But if you're twisting, don't just move your hands, right? Doesn't really do you much good. Move the shoulders with the hands, all right? So let's stand up, let's go back into that series again. This time, instead of a split squat, if you have a chair at home, we're gonna use the chair. So John, go ahead and stand forward. Put the back foot on the chair. All right, you're gonna hop out just a little bit. You wanna have some clearance here, all right, good. So stand up tall for me. The hips are locked down. Every single time you stand up, you want your shoulders on top of your hips, on top of your knee, on top of your ankle. All right, so you're going to go down slow. You're going to hold, hold, and then back up. Down, two, three, four. Holding, holding, back up. Down, two. John is so explosive that he hates the hold. Back up. Down, two, Three, four. Hold, two, there's four. Down, two, three, four. Go slower on the way down, there's five. Down, two, perfect. Four, hold, two, that's six. Down, two, three, four. Hold, two, that's seven. Down, you got the rhythm now, we're just gonna get a little bit of a talk. If this is too progressed for you, don't do it. Just do the split squat. Right? If you need a little, a little bit of stability, have a chair at your side that you could hold on to. But if that is still too much, simply go into the squat position and do 15 repetitions. Once you get the 10, keep uh, facing that direction, and then we'll just use the opposite leg. Good. Down slowly, two, hold, two, and up. Down, you there, good, good. You adjust it, you move forward so you have a little bit more clearance. And up, down, slow, three, four, hold, two, that's three, down, two, three. And it's really important, hold, two, that's four, down, that you make sure every time you stand up, you lock out, two, that's five, down, two, three, four. Hold, two, that's six. Down, two, three, four. Hold, two, that's seven. Down, two. Every time I have an app that do a four, two, one, they always want the, the seven seconds to last five seconds, four seconds. Take your time. Breathe through the exercise. If it burns, you're probably doing it right. Where are we at? Ten now. All right, this is the last rep. All right, instead of a side plank, we're going to go into a push-up position with the same concept. So go ahead, push-up position, and we're going to come down slowly, we're going to hold, and we're going to come up explosively. Hold on one second before we start taking knee. For some of you, this is going to be a little bit too much, and that's okay. Work the range of motion that you have, and if you need to, or even if you need to start it on your knees, start it on your knees. We don't want to come down so far that we're causing stress through the shoulder, 
Alright, but we do want to have a good range of motion. Push up position. Hands a little bit wider than the shoulders. Don't come down as far as you normally would, about 90% of the way. Go down slowly. Two, three, four. Hold it, hold it, up, down. Two, three. What you're going to feel here is a lot of shaking, not just through the shoulders, but also through the hips and the core. Three, four. Hold, two, there's four. Down, two, hips up a little higher. Three, four, hips up. Hold, two, there's five. Down, two. That was 35 seconds of a push up. Hold, two, there's six. Down, two, three, four. Hold, two, there's seven. Down, it's okay if you need to drop to your knees. Plenty of people, myself included, need to drop to my knees on this workout. There's eight, two more. Hold, two, there's nine. One more, great job, John. Keep those hips a little bit higher, keep that connection, squeeze the cheeks, good. And 10, on your butt, balance. Let's add those twisting, the twisting motion. Fingertips and shoulders twist together, and time is on. All right, good, good. You don't wanna to go too fast in this motion. You wanna spend some time doing the movement. You wanna make sure that those shoulders are twisting. But again, if, you, uh, if this is too progressed for you, Ease off, hold that position, but if that's still too progressed, certainly you can go right back into a crunch position. As you go through a workout like this, it's very easy to get more fatigued and more fatigued. Uh, you can twist a little bit quicker though. Good, a little bit more smooth, a little bit more movement out of the shoulders. Good, where are we at? Five. Good. We're gonna do eight per side. We're gonna assume that each time you move, it's going to take about six to seven seconds, so, so again, 45 to 60 seconds. Good. All right, let's do that bicep pull, the close grip roll, row rather, not roll, row. All right, chest down, ass higher, and pull, smooth and slow. If you are using a weight that is too light for you, take that tempo, up quick, holding, holding, and then down slowly, right? Up quick and hold, and down slowly. John, you're good on your choo choo tempo. This is an appropriate weight for you to have a smooth motion, but you can come up a little slower. Subtle changes can change the, uh, can, can uh, completely rework the dynamic of the session and the intent of the session. Just because one motion is here doesn't mean it's the same activation of the muscle group. Where are we at? That's 10. Good. Two more, two more, two more, two more. Let's get to 12. Let's try to get 12 to 15 reps and switch. Turn around. shoulders, upper back, the back, the cheeks, the hip bone, they're all in a straight line. Good. A little bit more smooth, a little bit more control out of that weight. If you can't control the weight, you're going to get out of rhythm. You're going to compensate. Do your best to manage it and then recognize when you lose control. All right, so now we're going to go into a, a complex of motion. Instead of doing the split squat or the chair squat, which you can do if you want to, we're going to do a hold, and we're going to keep all that weight on one leg. We're going to go out to the side and then forward. But when you go forward, you don't want to rotate, right? You don't want to shift your weight, right? You want to go out to the side, pull back in, forward. Pull back in. All that weight is staying on the squat hold. So go ahead, John, face the wall for me. We're going to uh, squat hold on your left side. Left side, left side. There we go. Get a little bit lower. This toe, every time your back in, touches the ground. Right? So move it out to the side. Good. Back in. Go slower. 
forward, hold it for a second, back in. That's one. Hold it for a second, in, forward, two, out, holding, in, forward, three, out, in, forward, four, out, slower, forward, five, out, in, forward, six, out, in, forward, seven, out, in, forward, eight, out, in, forward, nine, out, in, forward, ten. Turn around for me. Great job. Now let's try it with the other side. All right. And again, it's okay for one side to be stronger or more stable. Go ahead, right to that rhythm. Just don't rush. All right, good. Good. Be mindful that your weight doesn't shift backwards or to the side, even though this leg is moving forward and backward. All right? So if it starts to shift, if you start to fall, recognize it and don't put that toe as far off to the side. It doesn't need to be all the way out. Just a little bit, just to demonstrate that control. All right? You want to keep the shoulders square. You want to keep the hips square. John, where are we at? Six. Good. Good. Forward. Seven. Out. In. Forward. Eight. Out. In. Just go slower. Nine. Out. In. Forward. Ten. Push up position. The 4 2 1 push up. Before we get into that push up, John, I want you to get into push up position or go to your knees for me. All right. Push up position. Good. Now go all the way up. Zach, go all the way up to your feet. Then, 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 then. Push up. Push up position. So, push up. Knees. Push up. Knees. Stay there. Push up. Knees. Notice how his upper back and his hips aren't changing. Okay? So we're going to start with a push up when in the 4 2 1, but if he tires out, we're going to go to the knees. All right? So go back to your feet. And here we go. Three. Hands a little bit wider for me. Two, one, and down slow. Two, three, four. Hold it. Hold it. Up. Down. Two, three, four. Hold, two, there's two, down, two, three, four, hold, two, there's three, down, two, on your own tempo. Inside of this, your body is going to fatigue, especially the second time around. So you want to make sure that you can transition quickly. You don't want to be in this uh, push-up position, have to shake out your arms, and then go back into it. No, as soon as you start to tire out, if you can't push yourself back up, Knees on the ground, push yourself back up, make the transition smooth. Good, where are we at, John? Seven. All right, we got three more. Hips up a little higher, hips up a little higher. We want to make sure everything stays connected. Squeeze those cheeks, flex the stomach, breathing. Good, hips up, hips up, hips up, hips up. Good, good adjustment. See that? Keep going right into the next rep. You can, you can keep your knees on the ground. And then do it from the knees. One more rep for me. Everything stays connected. Good. On your butt. Balance and twist. This time, we're going to grab a little bit of weight. An eight pound weight is fine. Certainly, olive oil will work just fine. A gallon of milk, something. Now, a gallon of milk actually weighs as much or just slightly more than an eight pound weight. So, if you're doing your reverse fly, a gallon of milk is 8.3 pounds. Here we go. You're going to hold it sideways. With a twist. And twist. So what we want to do is the closer you keep that weight to your chest, the lighter that lever feels. So we want to put that weight in front of you just a little bit more so that when you twist, the lever is a little bit longer. All right, the, the mission is 8 to 10 reps per side. 8 is totally fine. That's around 45 to 50 seconds worth of work. 
right? And if it becomes too much, you're going to hold the weight steady away from your body, away from that chest to make that weight a little bit longer, that lever a little bit longer. Or if it becomes too heavy, you can hold it here or simply leave the weight. But again, if this has all been too progressed, you can just do this motion without the weight or holding for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and then resting as you need, trying to get to that 45 to 60 second time frame. All right, bend over row. Last time through here. Chest down, butt high. Even lower that chest, even higher with those hips. Good. Smooth and slow. Go slow, try not to jump that motion. Even smoother, even smoother. Good. And again, if this is too light for you, maybe you don't have 20 pound weights. Maybe all you have is that milk, uh, that gallon of milk, that eight pounder. Pull in, hold, and then down slow. All right? 12 to 15 repetitions on this is fantastic with this motion. But if you're doing uh, doing the rep of a 4 to one tempo, 10 repetitions is a minute and 10 seconds. Good. Where are we at, John? Good. Switch sides. Guys, John is sweating. Even in this dry, flat staff air, he's sweating. This is good work right here. Smooth and controlled. Notice that we're not taking too much rest in this session. We're trying to go from exercise to exercise. The benefit is, as long as I don't mess it up, if I can save this correctly, if you need to stop and pause or, or take a little bit of a rest and you're watching this on YouTube, well, you'll be able to. You can go at your own pace and make sure you're in the right position. So this will be the last exercise of this series, but we're not going to stop. We're going to go right into the fire hydrants. And when John does that, his hands are going to be out, uh, uh, on the black pad, and he's going to be facing the camera going forward. Knees on the purple, hands on the black. All righty. So fire hydrants, you're going to take, uh, choose a leg and go out to the side perpendicular to go as high as you can. Good. And back down. Wow, so two days ago, John was only able to come up to about here, all right? Hey, you can certainly come around. John was only able to come up to around here with his fire hydrant. Wow, this is actually, I'm pretty impressed. This is pretty good. It's amazing what just a little bit of motion can help provide with mobility and flexibility. Coach Esther has a, has a saying uh, that when you're just coming back into fitness, you kind of feel like a clogged up bottle of lotion, you know? It's hard to get fluid and, 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 uh, and smooth. It takes a few pumps to get all the crap out of the body, and then things start moving in the right way. Fantastic. Go a little slower. Good. So what we're going to do here is three sets, continuous, back to back to back on each side of 10 to 12 repetitions. We're not going to let those hips rest more than it takes for the other side to do the work. Again, so many of us are used to moving weight up and down, pushing and pulling. We're not used to going out to the side, and that's a big area to keep connection to. Smooth and slow. Good. Awesome. Notice how his shoulders aren't twisting. His elbows, oops, sorry about that, his elbows aren't bending to compensate for the levers getting heavier and heavier. And you'll notice, if you haven't done this exercise in a while, that that lever is going to get heavier and heavier. And maybe what you were able to do in the first set, maybe you're only able to come up 80% of the height in the second round, and maybe 70% of the height in the third round. But that's okay. You, you, you work with the range of motion that you have. Good. Keeping those elbows straight. Good. Good. We want to dorsiflex those feet, right? We don't want those feet pointed down. Got to figure out how to turn the screensaver off on the uh, computer. I'm not sure if it was recording this entire time, but guys, again, we're, we're new at this in terms of uploading videos and all that kind of stuff to YouTube, so hopefully 
The sound quality is pretty good. Hopefully you're able to get the intent of the day. Good. But notice how much less he's raising it up in the third round versus how much higher he was able to raise it in the first round. So if that's what's happening in your case, that's totally fine too. The more you do something to maximum range of motion, to maximum lift, the more fatigue you're going to get. Right? Expect that. That's totally okay. That's correct. That's correct? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, great. So we're going to take a little bit of a rest, grab some water, and we're going to finish with one more round of core. So this is your time to recover, relax for a moment, give yourself a little bit of rest. But we're going to do one more round of the opening four core exercises. Um, but before, before we do that, uh, and while John is taking his rest, I hope you guys are, are having a good time with this. I hope you guys are able to use this uh, for yourselves as a great way to stay active and motivated, have a little bit of fun with movement. Uh, as you can see, we don't need all the weights in the world. Uh, aside from a 20-pound weight, the heaviest thing we did was 8 pounds, uh, a gallon of milk. That's all you need, right? So in that, uh, again, we're going to be posting a lot of these videos up on YouTube. Uh, we would love if you guys can do the work, take a photo of yourself doing this work, share it on social media, get as many people excited about this as you can, uh, because we all need each other right now. We all need to be serving each other to the best of our ability. Uh, John, you ready to get back in the work? Yeah, all right. Plank position. Plank position. So we're going to go into the mid-grade level. Level two, which was the up-down, but maybe for you, you're only able to do the toe tap, or maybe for you, uh, just holding the plank is where we need to go. Up-down is 10. Smooth and slow. So notice, keep, go ahead, get right into it. Right when he moves his body, his hand is covering the mid part of his forearm. I actually want his hand to replace his elbow. Good. So that way, that weight stays underneath. Good. And if this becomes too much, we're going to regress and go to the toe tap. Good. Mindful of those hips. Good. Switch your lead hand. Start with your left hand this time. Good. Oftentimes, we, when we're doing compound movement like this, we like to start with the same hand every single time. But if you switch, you might find a weakness. And that's okay. That's all right. Exposing some of this weakness will help you become a stronger and more capable athlete. Good, great job on not letting those hips twist too much, keeping that core connected, squeezing the cheeks, locking those legs out. Where are we at? What number? Ten. Ten. Awesome. Single leg bridge. Let's use that soup can. All right. We're just going to go up and down. We're not going to worry about the push and pull. We just want to do the mid grade of the motion. Palms are facing the ceiling. Good. Your foot is square, up and down, smooth and slow, no pausing. All the way down with that lower back. Come all the way down. We want that spine to roll back down. It's going to roll up, and you want it to roll smoothly on the way down. Good. Great positioning. Palms are facing the ceiling. I tell you what, I did a few of these exercises myself, and uh, it's been some time since I did the motion, and I was feeling a little bit sore. Uh, I just started running a little bit myself as well, 15, 20, 25 minutes yesterday, and my quads are sore. So if this is the first time you've done some work, uh, if it's the first time in, in six months, like me, uh, or, or years, expect to be a little bit sore. We don't want to be so sore that you're walking like this to the bathroom, right? But it's okay if your quads are sore. That it means you're working. It means you're, we're, we're, we're challenging the body in a way that it's meant to be challenged, and we're trying to build that fitness, you will get better. If it lasts for a few days, DOMS, uh, delayed onset muscle soreness, that's okay. You just don't want to be so broken down that you can't live your regular and daily life. All right, where are we at? Six. Yeah, four more. Good. Smooth and controlled. And kneeling down, reverse fly. Yeah. Leg up? Uh, no, no, uh, on the ground, it's totally fine. We're going to regress everything in the final round. Smooth and slow. There's so many little intricacies that we can change to progress or regress an exercise. 
Um, we don't need, and we don't want to finish today with too high of an intensity. But so finishing with the, the exercises in this core, the opening core round is a great way to almost feel like you're having a cool down. It's not so invasive. It's still work, but it's not so invasive that you're going to be walking away from the session huffing and puffing. Just make sure you stay perpendicular to the body. Good. And turning and switching. Good. Perpendicular, not across the belly, but perpendicular across the sternum. It's very easy as you're tired, as you're fatigued, to want to come backward with the weight. But we want to keep this weight off to the side. All right, off to the side. Smooth and controlled. And we're going to finish this series with the last bit of the crunch. Feet on the ground is totally fine, but if you want, if that's way too easy for you, feet in the air. Smooth and slow, we're gonna dorsiflex those toes towards the knees, 10 to 12 repetitions without the added motion. But if this is too regressed, certainly you can go up and down, push and pull. Up and down with the body, push and pull with the legs, separating those motions. Smooth and slow, maintaining that composure of breathing. Good, where are we at? All right, two more. Nine, 10, done, fantastic work. Great job, great job. Guys, thank you so much for, for, for sharing your morning with us or your afternoon or maybe even your evening. Uh, we do hope, I mean, as you can tell, he's sweating a little bit, this is good work. Uh, yes, this it is. is Work enough for a professional level runner. This is work enough for any one of us. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, John, for spending your morning oh, with us. Um, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate and, it. And uh, Hannah behind the camera. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Enjoy your day. If you got questions, shoot us a line, send us a DM uh, on YouTube. You can certainly reach out james at thepretytrain.com. Be happy to answer any questions that you got. Have a great day.